second half of the NFL season is here, and those young QBs are putting on a show. But who's the best team? This is when we separate the pretenders from the contenders. And you can follow that story every Sunday with the NFL on CBS. And we're back. It's fourth and forever. First of all, happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for joining us. We're talking the 6-4 and four Ravens traveling to the 10-0 and 0 Steelers. So this game was postponed to Sunday due to COVID. Uh, it broke out in the Ravens locker room. Apparently as many as 10 players are affected right now. It started earlier this week. J.K. Dobbins and Mark Ingram were notably placed on the injured reserve COVID list. And after that, things just kind of took a turn downhill for the Ravens. Basically, they still have a great passing attack. If this game goes off on Sunday, they still have Mark Andrews. They still have Hollywood Brown. It's still Lamar Jackson. Gus Edwards is going to have to pick up some slack in the backfield for this running game. But they're still a very formidable opponent. And don't forget, they have Des Bryant, who recorded a catch after two years out of football, which is insane. But he caught a little screen pass or a little minus, and that's fine. Uh, so maybe he can help bolster this offense a little bit. But they're really playing against the best team in the NFL, in my opinion. They're 10-0, and and it's not just their record, but they're beating teams up. they got a healthy Big Ben. He's got a stable, young group of receivers. Juju, it's uh, Washington, and then, of course, the Pride of Canada, Rookie of the Year candidate, fourth and forever graduate, Chase Claypool, the Notre Dame alum. That's the only bad thing about him, by the way. But... Listen, he's one of our favorite players. We love him on the show. You know, I even chugged some maple syrup for him. So I'm rooting for Chase Claypool. I'm rooting for the Steelers. I think they win this game by at least a field goal. I know the line's minus three. They're favored. I, I see them winning by at least seven points, maybe even 10. This Ravens team is really taking a turn for the worst. And let's face it, this means a lot more for the Ravens than it does for the Steelers. If the Steelers lose this game, the sky's not falling. The, everything they want is still out in front of them. They can still win their division. They can still win the AFC and get to the Super Bowl. If the Ravens lose this game, this could be curtains with uh, potentially the Browns or somebody else trying to take that spot from them or just limping into the playoffs and getting wiped off the map again like last year. So there's a lot at stake for the Ravens, and hopefully they're healthy enough to, to field the team. And as we know, the Steelers, they're known for their defense. They still have the best defense in the league, holding teams to around 17 points a game, which is incredible. But What's the difference this year? Why are they so fun to watch? Why are they so explosive? Because it's not just their defense. They're playing complimentary football. And by complimentary, I'm talking the fourth best offense in the league. When we think about explosive offenses, it's the Chiefs and Mahomes. It's the Seahawks and Russ Wilson. It's the Packers and Aaron Rodgers. But right behind them are the Steelers and a healthy Big Ben, this young group of wide receivers. They're lighting the league on fire this year. They're scoring 29.8 points a game. So it's not just their defense right now that they built last year, took their lumps on offense last year, waited for Big Ben to come back, played the long game, didn't worry about the media circus, criticizing them for not having a quarterback. They knew what was going to happen. And it always seems like Mike Tomlin, he just knows that good things are right around the corner for him. So credit to him, credit to their standard. I see the Steelers moving to 11-0 this week. This next game, interesting matchup. Titans 7-3, Colts 7-3. Huge AFC South division implications here. Both teams are riding a high of overtime victories last week. The Titans took the Ravens down to the wire. Derrick Henry got better as the game went on. And then A.J. Brown just willed his way in the end zone. Henry, obviously, with the walk-off touchdown. But then the Colts and Phillip Rivers and their offense-by-committee approach beat the red-hot Green Bay Packers. They're looking to win this AFC South as well. So for the Colts, it's really their rookies at receiver and running back. Michael Pittman Jr. coming back from injury in a big way, having three catches and a touchdown last week. Then you look at Jonathan Taylor out of Wisconsin, finally getting healthy, finally hitting his stride who have Phillip Rivers looking like his younger self, spreading the ball around. If you look at the stats from that last game, everybody has like two to four catches. Everybody's got anywhere from 40 to 60 yards, maybe a touchdown, but everybody's getting their chance to touch the ball. Nobody cares who gets the credit or notoriety. They just want to score, they want a ball, and they want to win. But when you look at the Titans, they rebound after a tough loss to the Colts on Thursday night two weeks ago. It's not often you play the same team twice in about two weeks, but... They still have that bad taste in their mouth. They're going to be hungry for the Colts. The longer this game goes, the stronger Derrick Henry gets. The way A.J. Brown's playing, I think Ryan Tannehill's going to light it up. I think that running game's going to get them started and finish this game strong for them. This is my underdog pick of the week. I'm taking the Titans. 
And a big matchup on Sunday, the Chiefs 9-1 take on the 7-4 Buccaneers in Tampa Bay. Let's start with the Chiefs. They're firing on all cylinders. It's Patrick Mahomes. It's Travis Kelsey. Late game heroics against the Raiders propel them to a victory. Mahomes just makes it look so easy. Nobody can guard Tyreek Hill. He has a monster game. And it's almost impossible to game plan for these guys with all the talent they have on offense. Put it this way, Le'Veon Bell is their number two running back. He was a former NFL rushing champ. That tells you everything you need to know about these guys. So credit to them, their organization, from the top down, their personnel department, the guys going out to get these players, and essentially getting these guys to take a little less money to stick around and win a bunch of football games. They look great. Now, when you look at the Bucs, they're coming off a very difficult loss to the Los Angeles Rams at home. Late in the fourth quarter, Tom Brady gets picked off. He got picked off early in the game too five interceptions in his last three games hasn't looked like himself something's not meshing correctly right and you see the interview with Bruce Arians he's kind of airing out Brady for you know not interpreting coverage correctly potentially and you know getting fooled by coverage is kind of what he alluded to I don't know I just feel like something's off right Brady's used motion he's used formations he's used specific personnel matchups to dictate coverage to the defense Right now, I don't see them doing that a lot. They're in a lot of static formations, very little motion. You have the players and the chess pieces to move these guys around and get information from the defense, and I just don't see them doing it. So I'd like to see them pick that up a little bit. I'd like to see them integrate Antonio Brown. I know he had 11 targets last week. Is this the week that you get the world-class output from this world-class athlete that has these character red flags, Antonio Brown? Is this the time it happens? I know they gave it to him four straight plays last week, which was awesome to see, but it just hasn't turned into those big plays. And to me personally, I just feel like it's a lot of moving pieces constantly. There's not a lot of continuity. It's just not enough time on task because you look at their roster, they're as good, if not better than the Chiefs, essentially. And it just doesn't click yet. So it's going to take a little time, but time's running short. I mean, it's always been Tom versus time. Is this the year? Is this the game? Is this the week that the Bucs lose two weeks in a row? I think it is. I'm giving the Chiefs a victory this week, and they're going to win by at least three and a half. This next game, one of the oldest rivalries in football, Sunday night, the Bears, 5-5, five and five, travel to the Packers, 7-3. and three. The Packers are coming off a tough overtime loss to the Colts. Marquez Valdez-Scantling fumbles. Then he gets these death threats? I mean, come on. This is transcending football. This is, this is trending in the wrong direction. The guy fumbled. Nobody wants to win more than these guys on the field. I don't think it's worth death threats. I think that's very extreme. Aaron Rodgers came out, stuck up for him. I applaud that. I think that's the right thing to do. But the Packers don't need any more motivation. This is what they do. Aaron Rodgers gets hot at the end of the year, has his team, you know, trending in the right direction, crescendoing, if you will, as they mosey on into the playoffs. I think they steamroll the Bears. The Bears are in just a world of hurt right now. I think they're rethinking a lot of decisions. Potentially hiring Matt Nagy is one of them because his offense has just been anemic. It has been sad to watch. They put up very few points. They're not explosive. I think they're rethinking maybe benching Mitch Trubisky in the third game because now Foles is in, hasn't given them the spark they were looking for, maybe just in that one game versus Atlanta. But after that, it's been a little stale. And so I don't know what they're thinking on offense. They have a world-class defense, a championship caliber defense, and it's really being wasted right now because they can't get things figured out at quarterback, and it's really too bad. But who's going to be the healthier option? Who knows? Mitch is still nursing that injury that he suffered with the Saints. Foles still nursing his injury, his hip, when he fell awkwardly in their last primetime football game. So who's going to be the healthier option? It's really too bad to watch what's unfolding because they're wasting a great opportunity to have a championship defense. I think the Packers roll in this one. They're favored by seven and a half. I think they win by at least 10. 